Hi there, welcome back to JD Answers. Today we're going over loop recording. Welcome back to JD Answers. This is episode five of Camp Cues, where we're gonna take in-depth look at loop recording. Loop recording is a feature that helps you not worry about deleting any old files or formatting your micro SD card. It does it for you. And the way it works is once it starts recording, now when your card gets full, it would delete the oldest recorded video and then it'll start the loop process again. So as you record a new footage, it's deleting the oldest one. You record another one, it deletes the, re the oldest one. Now what it doesn't delete or overwrite is any lock videos that you got from your G sensor, which can be caused by hard braking, shaking, or a collision. And if you want more information about G sensor, I'll put a link right up here for you to get more information about G sensor. Now with loop recording, you got to be careful about your lock videos when you set your sensitivity on your G sensor, because once you get too many lock videos, there's not enough room to record any regular videos because it's full of lock videos. So this is why you want to test your G sensor more often. If you notice you're getting a lot of lock videos, set your sensitivity to low because any hard braking, any shakes, which is caused by a lot of times with potholes or speed bumps, it will cause the G sensor to activate. So you got to be careful with that because if you're in an incident and you look at your video and there's no video there, it's because of the lock videos. So sometimes it will say memory card is full or format your, your micro SD card. And you're thinking, well, there's an error because I have loop recording. It should do that automatically. Well, it does if there's enough room to record videos in there. So, once in a while, you got to take your micro SD card, put it in the computer. It could be monthly, bi-weekly, but if you, once you got all those kinks out with your, gen, your sensitivity, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. It does it automatically. But over time, your lock videos will start piling up and you have to uh, reformat your micro SD card. So just because you have loop recording doesn't mean you have to just put it in there and you got nothing to worry about. What I always do is I keep an extra micro SD card in the glove box. That way when it's, uh, when I feel a couple of months has passed, I get the micro SD card, I put a brand new one in the dash cam, and then I could take the other one and look at it later. I don't have to look at it that day because I already have one fresh in there and I'm not missing any incidents that happen while I'm driving because that's why you have your dash cam to record any incidents. So that's why I keep that extra one in there. Now let me show you some files from a micro SD card that had too many lock videos. And then we'll show you another micro SD card that had regular files. And we could compare the difference. Okay, it opens up to the file explorer. It's in a micro SD card and I'll open up the DCIM file. And you see there's an A and then there's a B. A DCIM A, DCIM B, which is the a is for the front dash cam, B is for the rear camera. So I'll double click the A, and you notice already the files start with the M. These are your regular driving footage. And if you scroll down further down, you'll see that this one starts with an L. This means this is one of the lock files. Then you have another one here, another lock file, and a lock file here. These are the files that were uh, generated by the G sensor, where it locks the current uh, file if there's a shake or collision or you manually lock the file because you want to save an incident. You also notice that the sequence is 204, 205, 206, 207, and so forth. And the lock files stay in the sequence. You got 220, 221, and 222, which is a regular file. 223 is a lock file. 224 is a lock file. 225 is, is a regular file. And this is how a micro SD card will look during your your driving 
Now let's take a look at a file that when someone has not checked their micro SD card in a while and they have done a lot of hard breaking or there's a lot of bumps and they actually sent set their G sensor to high you can see that they're all lock files everything is a lock file except the last four so when your when your dash cam is loop recording with all these lock files you're only loop recording four files let's see one two three four five I'm sorry there's five and if your your loop recording set at three minutes then you're only recording 15 minutes at a time that is all you're recording so you have to go back to your dash cam after you set your G sensor and look at the files to see are you getting too many lock files or are they fine as the previous uh, micro SD card we just reviewed and you notice the sequence there's uh, 1003 and then there's 1332 the reason it was is because there was files in between these two but because of the loop recording it kept recording over it and then it kept generating locked files and you only had five remaining to record so this is why you need to continually go back and review your loop recording now if you have a hard wire uh, kit installed in your car and you have your car sitting outside, it's parked, or you're at work, then all the files are going to be when your car is parked. And and if you had an incident prior to that that you did not, uh, that wasn't a collision or a shake, your G sensor did not activate it, and you did not manually lock that video, when you get off of work or in the morning, it's not going to be there because the G sensor has just. Um, I'm sorry, the loop recording has already looped over all those recordings because your micro SD card only has a certain amount of time that it records. Okay, now that we saw the difference and you can see how too many lock videos would not make the loop recording work. But remember, you can set this to one minute, two minute, three minute, or five minute loop recordings. There's a lot of people out there that say they like, to, they like to put theirs at three minutes. Well, most dash cams, if you record for one minute and five minutes, the file size is exactly the same. So you're not really saving any space in your micro SD card. Now, if you record a five minute video, I'm sorry, if you record for five minutes, and you had your loop recording set for one minute. Well, you'll have five one minute recordings rather than one five minute video to view your footage. Now, let's say you have, you recorded a 20 minute video, but your loop recording is at one minute. Well, you got 20 videos to, re to view rather than four or five minute videos. We could say the same thing for three minute. You'll have six plus seven videos to view if you record it for 20 minutes. Whereas five minutes, you'll be having four. It's really up to you of how many videos you want to watch or you want to break down each individual scene. But you have to go through a lot of videos to do this. Now you could also look the files under details and it tells you what date and what time. You could go by that as well. Me personally, if the files are the same, I'll keep mine at five minutes. It's less files to, to view. Now let's go over loop recording when you have an incident. Let's say you had a collision and your loop recording is set at three minutes, but the incident happened on your loop recording time at two minutes and 30 seconds. And the G sensor will lock that current video. Well, that means you only got 30 seconds left until the uh, the lock video ends and then it starts a fresh loop recording the next loop recording would not be locked unless you manually lock that video so which is probably another reason to have it set at five minutes now say for example you do have it set at five minutes and the incident happened at four minutes and 45 seconds of your loop recording time that means in 15 seconds it's going to stop the lock video 
So this is just a helpful hint if the incident is still occurring and you're still recording the incident from your dash cam uh, of, the, of the incident happening in front of the car. Say you both are talking in front of the car or behind the car if you have a rear camera, then you wanna keep the recording going on. So you gotta manually press the record to, to lock that video in there. So by pressing the lock to lock that current video, you are continually saving that video for future evidence. And that way, by the time you go home or you forget, that incident would not be overridden. Or you want to make certain that everything is locked so you can save it for your insurance purposes. Lock that video every time manually because unless the collision, the G-Center will lock it. After that, you have to manually lock the video. Most of the time, the arrows up or down will lock that video. Not for all dash cams, but most of them, that's what it'll do. You need more information on dash cam features? Subscribe to this channel and you can go to the playlist under cam cues and you can get more information about the features. You have any additional questions about this loop recording or other dash cam features? Leave them in the comment section down below. If this video was helpful for you, please give me that thumbs up because you know, I appreciate that from you. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.